Hello everyone and welcome to another devlog video for Homegrown, the casual farming game I'm making using my own engine and it's going to be a bit more of a technical devlog video this week because I'm just going to be working on implementing the audio system into my engine so just wanted to let you know up front that it's going to be a lot of programming this week and there aren't going to be very many visual changes in the game. So first this week, let me just quickly show you in Trello where we are in the whole development process. Last week I finished off version 0.4 of Homegrown, which I'd been working on for about six months, and that was all about gameplay improvements, such as the land buying system, support for new types of objects, the item upgrade system, and improvements to tool functionality, the different qualities of vegetables depending on how healthy your plants are, the new compost and fertilizer system, the uses for pathways, and finally last week I finished it all off by just adding some more content into the game, a few new vegetables and items. So this week I'm finally moving on to version 0.5, which I'll be working on at least until the end of this year, and this is going to be all about overhauling the UI in the game. So. There are going to be some big changes coming to the UI very soon, but this week I first need to start off by implementing an audio system because I obviously want my UI to have sound effects, but I haven't added support for that into the engine yet. So that is what I'm going to be starting work on today. So starting off with a quick bit of planning, I'm going to be using the OpenAL library to create my audio system, which is what I used in Equinox as well. And obviously I did create a full audio system for Equinox back in the day, um, but I'm not going to be using that for this project. There were just too many things that I got wrong last time, some fundamental ways that I structured the code that I want to do differently this time, plus it had a few issues, um, which I'm sure I'll talk more about later. So I am going to be starting from scratch again but I'm sure I'll reference and use parts of the Equinox code where relevant, and then hopefully by the end of this week I'll have a much improved audio system that I can use for homegrown. So to get started I've just been watching through my old audio tutorials from seven years ago just to remind myself of the basics of OpenAL and I just implemented the code from the tutorial, so I can now play my first sound effects in the game. So it might kind of seem like I'm already halfway done because I'm already able to play sound effects, but unfortunately it's not going to be that simple and there's still lots to do. Next up, I've just been writing some code to load up OGG files, which is the audio file format that I want to use for this game. It's also the file format that I tried to use for Equinox, but I never quite got it working. I always had some audio glitches when I tried playing two OGG tracks at the same time. So in the end, I just used OGG for the music in Equinox, and then all the other sound effects used .wav files which are a lot bigger and less compressed, which is why I prefer to use OGG files. So um, I've actually been using a different library to load them up here, and uh, it's a bit more high level, so it does more of the stuff for me, so hopefully I shouldn't have that same issue. So I just spent the last few hours learning how to use this library, and I've just now uh, written this simple implementation to load up the OGG files. I've been working on the streaming system next to date, so for small sound effects you can just load them up entirely into memory, they don't take up much space, but for longer sound effects, such as music tracks, you don't really want to load up the entire thing because they would just take up so much memory. So what you do instead is you stream the sound data from the sound file. It's a pretty simple concept, so in memory you have two buffers, and to start with you load the first part of the sound file into them so that you can start playing the track. Then once the first buffer has been played you can replace its contents with the next chunk of sound data and then queue it back up to be played after the current buffer. And you just keep going like that until the whole track has been played. So the listener won't notice any difference but behind the scenes only a small portion of the track is ever stored in memory at any given time. 
So that's what I've just been implementing and that is already up and running. Next up, I've just been working on source management. So sources are the objects in OpenAL that actually play the sounds, but you're only able to create a certain number of sources at any one time. So you're only, on my computer, you're only allowed to have 256. So what I've done is I create a source pool, initialize it with a load of sources, and then when a sound needs to be played, it just takes a source from the sound pool to play the sound on. And then when the sound has finished playing, it returns the source to the pool so that other sounds can use it. And um, I also did something that I did in Equilinox, which is to have different parts of the game have their own source pool. So the music has its own source pool, the UI has its own source pool, the objects in, in the 3D world have their own source pool, just so that in the unlikely event that you manage to fill up the world with loads of sound making objects, um, which might cause the game to run out of sources, you'll only run out of sources for the entities. So the music, for example, with its dedicated source pool would still be able to play. It would still have enough sources so the music won't cut out. The UI would still play sound effects. It would just be for the entities that not all the sound effects would be able to play at once. So the core functionality of the audio system is now complete and it pretty much boils down to this. So let me just talk you through it. So this is how you load a sound file and it will either load the entire sound file or not depending on how big the sound file is, whether it's a small sound effect or whether it needs streaming. Then to play a sound, I call the play sound method, put in the sound that I want to play and any initial parameters like volume, pitch, position, any other stuff like that. And that will play the sound, um, handling everything to do with source pools or streaming and it returns an instance of the sounds playthrough object, which allows you to change the variables of the sounds while it's playing. So while the sound's playing, I can alter the pitch or the volume or the position, or I can stop the sound. Um, I can also tell the sound to fade out and other things like that. And then I've also just been working on a way to set the kind of the master volume levels for different audio types. Um, so for example, here I'm setting the master volume for all UI sound effects to 0 0.5. Um, so this would obviously be used in like an options menu where you'd have sliders allowing the player to choose the volume for all the music in the game or all the sound effects in the game. So that is the core functionality of this system all finished now. And tomorrow I'm going to integrate this into the game and then I'm going to start building on top of this core to create some higher level concepts that will be useful for the game. To start off today, I've been working on UI sound effects and I created this Sound2D class to help me with that. So essentially this allows me to just set up the sound effect once and set all of the variables relating to it. And then whenever I want to play that sound effect, I just have to call the dot play method on it and that handles the, the play sound call to the audio master and puts in the parameters so I don't have to do that uh, manually every time. It also allows me to do some slightly more interesting things. So here I'm setting up a click sound effect for the UI and you can see I'm able to tell it to randomize the pitch. So every time it plays this sound effect, it will play at a slightly different pitch and I can also provide it with multiple sounds and then every time it plays the sound effect, it chooses one of these sounds to play at random. So I've given it four different click sounds and each time it will play a different one of these. So I've set that up once here and then anywhere in the UI code where I want a click sound to play, I just call click sound.play and that will play a slightly different sounding click every time. So I can show you that working in the game. So when I click on an item in the inventory, it plays that click sound and you can hear it's a slightly different sounding every time. I'm working on the 3D sound effects next and I'm just testing it out with this jungle sound effect which is being emitted from the position of the well. So when I'm far away from the well, the sound is pretty faint, but the closer I get, the louder and louder it gets. And I also sorted out the listener orientation, which is something I never really got working in Equinox. 
So when the well is to the left of me, then the sound comes more out of my left speaker. When it's to the right of me, it comes more out of the right speaker. Not sure if that's coming across on YouTube, but it's working in the game. So this is the code that I've just been writing for the sound emitter, and this just keeps track of the position of all the sounds that are playing, so they'll be updated even if the sound emitter moves, and it also tests whether the sound effects are within range of the listener, because if the, if the sound emitter is miles away, then you're not going to hear the sounds anyway, so there's no point in them being played. Just been doing some work on the ambient sound effects, so these are like the background noises of birds tweeting and things like that, and I've just kept the system super simple for now, and I can always make it more nuanced in the future. So in the garden area you can hear there are now birds twittering in the background, and if I switch to the town area you can hear that it, it fades out and changes to the sound of people, the hustle and bustle of the town, which I know doesn't make sense because there are no people in the town right now, but that's beside the point. I'm working on adding some sound effects to the tool actions at the moment, and I've realised a couple of things. Firstly, it's a bit more complicated for the tool sound effects because I can't just play a sound effect once when you carry out the action because the time it takes to do the action varies depending on what bucks you've got and how you've upgraded your tool and things like that. So I need the length of these sound effects to be variable somehow. And then secondly, you're going to be doing these actions a lot in the game and if I'm not careful the sound effects can become very repetitive and a bit annoying uh, if they're not varied enough. You can really hear that it's the same sound effect playing over and over again. So I've been having a think about how I can combat these issues and I think I'm going to try implementing some very light procedural generation for the sound effects. Nothing complicated at all. I think it's going to be actually quite simple to implement. So. I'm going to program that now and uh, see how it feels. So yeah, I've implemented these compound sound effects now, which are a bit different from the other sound effects because they don't have a single play method, they instead have a start and a complete method, so the effects can just continue playing until the complete method is called and I construct these compound sounds in a kind of component-based way by adding various tracks to them. And I've just implemented three different types of tracks for now. So firstly, there are these looping tracks. These just play a sound on loop for the duration of the sound effect, and then when the complete method is called, they just fade out. Then we've got these random tracks, which play sounds at random intervals throughout the duration of the effect. So here in setting up the digging sound effect, I've got the sounds of rubble and spade sounds playing randomly until the effect is over. And finally, the end track just plays its sounds when the effect is stopped. So here, when the digging is complete, it will play the sounds of the grass tile breaking. So here it is in the game, and the actual sounds aren't great right now. These are just free sounds I quickly found online. But the point is, I can now create these nice layered sound effects for the tool actions. They can match the length of the action, it doesn't matter how long the action takes. And every time the sound effect plays, it's going to generate differently. So you're not going to hear any repetition. So I've just been adding lots of placeholder sound effects for pretty much all of the actions in the game. Um, I got most of the sound effects from Aquilinox and also found a few free ones online which I just tweaked and altered a bit to fit better with the game. But it's really nice having sound effects in the game, even if they are just placeholders for now. It, it really makes the game feel a lot more alive. And yeah, I'll be quiet now and demonstrate some of the, the new sound effects in Homegrown.
Just want to quickly show you one other improvement that I made to the sound system that wasn't in Equilinox. So in Equilinox, very occasionally, and it was really rare, but a couple of people mentioned that they got an error because OpenAL had failed to initialize for whatever reason, maybe they had an incompatible sound device or sound card, but when this happens, the entire game would crash because uh, the rest of the game would still be trying to call the audio system, which would try and call OpenAL, which would throw an error because OpenAL hadn't initialized. So to avoid that this time, when I'm creating, when I'm setting up the sound system, if there's an error when trying to initialize OpenAL, then it now returns this empty audio master. The rest of the game doesn't know, it can still interact with the audio master like normal, but this audio master doesn't do anything. So it won't send any calls to OpenAL, so the game won't crash, and you'll be able to continue playing, albeit without sound. So that's going to be it for this video, version 0.4.1 now complete, and I just uploaded the latest version of the game and the code to Patreon, so if you're a Patreon supporter, you can now check out everything that you saw in this video. Speaking of Patreon supporters, I just want to give a big shout out to the top Patrons from last month, who were Shadeless Fox, Kimo Tamio, Coda the Tyler, Ross from Two Minute Tabletop, Nikat Asgazada, Zanil Ambakar, Atomic Code, Walden Yan, Me the Pig, Chris Naismith, Alan Lance, Josiah Hillman, Wonuff, Dieter Reinert, Harry Chung, John Needham, Christoph Herpo, Adam Farkas, Hagen Vingard, Matthew Connerton, Andrew Witt, Marek Mikolajczyk, Sean McCrory, John Langer, Caffeine Coda, Timothy Gibbons, Alexander Chavez, and Neil Blakey Milner. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. Next time, we will finally be getting into the big UI changes, but for this week, that is it. So thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again next time.